Good morning. I'm so delighted to see all of you here today. And the topic which I picked is huge, but the time is very short. So let's see how we can uh, handle this in a very small time. Uh, the topic is oxidative stress, managing fatigue and fibromyalgia. Now this is a huge topic because oxidative stress is cause of many diseases, uh, uh, which are scientifically and research has found that there are a lot of diseases which are related to the oxidative stress. And what is oxidative stress? I'll take you back a little to the basics. If you see your body organization, we have atom, which is smallest unit of the matter, then we have molecules, group of atoms together. Close it. Okay. And then cell, which is the smallest unit uh, of life. And in the cell, we have mitochondria. And mitochondria is what we get ATP. And ATP is which gives you energy. In the next slide, if you see uh, everything which we eat, whether we are eating carbohydrates, fats, proteins, eventually they are converted into or go through the metabolism, breaking down of the glucose which gives you energy. And you cannot use carbohydrates, protein and fats directly because it is like $100 bills. You have to break them, we have to break them in your mitochondria to give that smaller unit which is ATP and your cells use that as a form of energy. So it is so important what we eat because whatever we eat is going to affect how the energy is produced and how our cell is functioning. So this energy generation mechanism which is so essential for life that can also set the stage for your mitochondrial damage. So the point is what is oxidative stress? Oxidative stress occurs when there is imbalance between the body's production of the free radicals and that is the reactive oxygen species. These are the normal metabolic processes. When the things go wrong, these reactive oxygen species take charge and then your cells get damaged and your detoxifying system get damaged. Reactive oxygen species which are damaging to your health can be produced by pollution, your ultraviolet rays, radiation, smoking, and uh, the biggest thing is nutrition. And these can be damaged by cell membrane, these can damage your cell membrane, these can damage your low density lipoproteins in which your uh, lipids level can be very high, and it can also affect your genetic material, which is your DNA. So the coding system of the DNA, which is dictating your gene, is disturbed. So oxidative stresses can cause a lot of diseases. And if you say it has cancers, you can have inflammation, aging, diabetes, chronic stresses, even cardiac diseases, respiratory disorder, and tons of diseases, and which we are going to talk more is the chronic pain. Chronic pain. You can call it fibromyalgia, so because I'm going to blend all of these things together. Then we have a role of antioxidants. What are the antioxidants? These are the substances which neutralize the effect of free radicals. And these are vitamin E, C, beta carotene, vitamin A, selenium. And these are actually present in your body. If you're eating healthy, you do not need any supplements. So what is the function? The function is that these vitamins, they can donate those electrons and make these reactive oxygen species stable so that they are not damaging to your cell. Some minerals also act like uh, enzyme complexes. Most of the time, endogenous and dietary antioxygen, they can combine together and control these damaging reactive oxygen species. So if we have a balance of oxidative stress and antioxidant system, then you can deal with your cancer, you can deal with your inflammation, and also you can, we, can, we can deal with lifestyle-related diseases, which I would say all those chronic diseases which 
Sata was talking about, and also your immune system. And if you have a good immune system, you can deal with a lot of stress which is given, given, to our, given to our body by poor nutrition or exposure to the environmental factor which are not under our control. So, uh, what is the role of free radicals? According to the research, the research study was 85 female patients with a primary fibromyalgia and 80 age, height and weight matched healthy women were evaluated for the oxidant and antioxidant balance. And in conclusion, they found out uh, that the balance was changed in fibromyalgia patients. Increase of the free radicals may be responsible, may be responsible because this, the research is going on, but it is maybe responsible for the development of fibromyalgia. And these hypotheses um, actually find support the hypothesis of fibromyalgia as an oxidative disorder. So in the mitochondria, the, as I was explaining, glucose is converted to ATP, which is used by the muscle as a source of energy. So in many patients with fibromyalgia, the mitochondria of the cell in the body is shown to be impaired. So how it, every time when I used to see that there are a lot of holistic practitioners which usually give coenzyme Q10. Now what is the reason for that? And then I was trying to understand what's the reason for that. Coenzyme Q10 deficiency, it is an essential electron carrier in the mitochondria. It is strong antioxidant. When it has a problem, it can alter its mitochondrial function and this whole respiratory complexes lead to increased production of reactive oxygen species. And recent studies have shown that CoQ10, CoQ10 deficiency in the blood monoclear cell in these patients is huge and there is deficiencies leading to uh, the condition which is called fibromyalgia. And this could understand, help us understand the pathophysiology of this disorder. And this might lead us uh, for the development of new therapeutic strategies and prevention for the treatment of fibromyalgia patients. Uh, what is understanding your pain of fibromyalgia? It's a chronic widespread pain and most patients experience extreme fatigue, sleep disturbance, sensitivity to the touch, sound and cognitive difficulties and predominantly women, 80% of those affected women between ages of 35 and 55. And why it is more in the women? It seems like maybe it has to do with some hormones which are different in the women. And there is the pain amplification due to abnormal sensory processing in the CNS. Because when we have pain fiber going from your body, going to the central nervous system, pass through the thalamus, and they are going to the somatosensory cortex, that is where you feel pain. Now, this cycle in the fibromyalgia patient is never stopped. And the, this is amplification of this pain as compared to the normal person who do not have this condition. So, increased number of scientific studies have shown Level of substance P in the spinal cord is increased, which is related with the pain. Low level of the blood flow to the thalamus, which is carrying impulses to somatosensory cortex in the central nervous system. And also there is issues with the hypothalamic uh, pituitary adrenal axis. Low level of serotonin and tryptophan. So this is an imaging study actually, and the blue area correlation to the healthy brain demonstrate healthy electrical activity. And if you see, uh, I'm not sure if this is working. Yes, this one, uh, the additional red and white correlation of the fibromyalgia brain scan represent this um, more white areas and you have little more blue areas. So, the important thing in this slide to notice 
Because in fibromyalgia effect on the brain involves the same brain regions and pathway involved in the basic emotions. Negative emotions like anger, stress, anxiety, they amplify the experience of pain. So it correlates that it is important to control negative emotions because it can have a positive impact on pain. So the perception of pain is increased in this patient. So what is the cycle for the fibromyalgia emotions? When you have a prolonged fatigue, then you get into anxiety, then you get into depression, then you get chronic fatigue syndrome. This cycle goes on and then it's become a never ending story. Repetition of the symptom of depression, anxiety, pain, and irritable bone syndrome is also really is in relationship with because of the anxiety of the brain leads to the anxiety of the stomach, like dead brain syndrome. There are certain conditions which actually mimic uh, fibromyalgia, in which you have low thyroid hormone, in which patient have fatigue symptom all the time, muscle pain. They may be like fibromyalgia. Vitamin D deficiency also can give you pains. Parathyroid diseases, muscle diseases, bone diseases, and infectious diseases such as hepatitis, Abstin, Boer virus, and AIDS cancer patients can also mimic. But the important thing is there is no set diagnosis for any. Fibromyalgia, physical diagnosis is due to, uh, physical diagnosis can be made by physical examination. And uh, according to the American College of Rheumatology, there is a criteria how many tender points need to be there before you leave a patient as a fibromyalgia. The tests are done, but the tests are done only to exclude if there is any other condition or any other medical diagnosis to rule out the medical diagnosis. This slide I enjoy in all my presentations because I like this slide. Now how you do the treatment for the fibromyalgia is, if you see the wheel of health, I see it as a wheel of fortune. You have a mindfulness and then around mindfulness is your self-care. And in self-care, you have mind-body connection. You have movement and exercise, nutrition. And you have physical environment, um, relationships. Um, and we have then pharmaceutical supplements. Pharmaceuticals and supplements, pain medications are in pharmaceuticals. Then we have preventive medicine and we have conventional medicine along with the complementary treatments. But if we mostly most of us, we focus on where for, for the conventional, conventional and also this pharmaceutical. And for one pharmaceutical medication which you take, maybe you require three more to prevent the side effects. And if our life is focused on that, then this is, this is not what we are going to achieve. And when we don't achieve this, this is very ineffective. So the important thing is treating any condition, treating whether it is a chronic fatigue, treating whether it's fibromyalgia, treating whether it is your heart disease, anything, we need to have a lifestyle change. And what is the lifestyle changes? You can have pain management, we can establish regular sleep, psychological support is very important, but what is more important is holistic approach. Patient's education completely understanding the problems which they have, how to deal with the stresses, how to deal with nutrition, and how we can be very effective dealing with all this holistic approach. So it is scientific actually research that your mindful meditation, number of studies have shown that they have a benefit on not only fibromyalgia, but all the chronic pain, all the chronic conditions. Um, it is very beneficial. And what we can do is deep breathing, massage therapy, biofeedback, and muscle relaxation techniques. Exercise is very important. I've got short because I don't have to explain what to do with exercises, but in fibromyalgia patients, you have graded exercises because you do not want to actually put them in pain, for the pain. Nutrition is one of the important part, and uh, because diet, which I was talking to you about, the cell and the energy, now, now this is, if you, uh, if you see the diet, that is how effective, because whatever we eat, whether it's, and we have tons of vitamins in our food, 
And when we are taking vitamins and, and the food rich in vitamins, these oxidative stress can be dealt just by eating healthy food rather than taking any supplementations. So alternative treatments are others like acupuncture, chiropractic, massage care. Um, so in conclusion, I would say that um, several observations lead us to think um, the brain can influence the pain perception. So even if you see the gene and environment, it's genetically people are different. Some people perceive pain more as compared to the other. Intensity of the pain can be same, but the threshold of the pain is different. And why it is different is, and I think it is more of a learned phenomenon, that how you learn to let go of your pain, how you accept your pain. And acceptance of the pain in studies have shown actually to the most effective way to tolerate pain when you accept your pain and mindful living, meditation. The most effective way of dealing with our pains. In conclusion, this disease is chronic and becomes very frustrated to any person who is affected. So it takes measure to supply the body with proper nutrition, graded exercises, um, and enhancing the body's communication through conventional and integrative approach, which is very, very important for the optimum outcome. So um, here is a small cartoon. What fits your busy schedule better? Exercising one hour a day or being dead 24 hours a day? So lifestyle change and choice is yours. Thank you. <laughs>